mind if I sit? Michael. Please, please sit, sit. That was a nifty trick the other night. Uh, it's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Marinacci of the DA were ready to cut cards for your services at that point. <laughs> Of course, it was an altogether different trick that disappearing at you pulled today at your group's meeting. Well, I figure I owe you an explanation. No, no, not to me. I'm sure there's a good reason you left. You just have to work harder, prepare, and smooth things out with the others. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, thanks. Stay. Take a drink. Jamie. Yeah. Another glass. Sure. Darling. What are you drinking? Gin. Always gin. Here you go. Thanks, dear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know a magician doesn't divulge his secrets, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm no magician. Well, it wasn't magic. How did you know what everyone held? That's a combination of things. I, um, I was watching when the cards came out. That's, that's just an old habit with me. Like breathing. You watch the cards. I watch the cards also, but I watch the players reacting to the cards. That's how I knew the DA made his two pair, and and uh, Judge Kaplan missed the flush. Yeah. I was watching their eyes when they checked their river cards. And their faces tell you everything. So you watch the man. I I never knew you had to calculate so much at cards. I, God. All right, here's the thing. You won't play premium hands. You only start with jacks or better split, nines or better wired, three high cards to a flush. If it's good enough to call, you gotta be in there raising, all right? I mean tight, but aggressive. And I do mean aggressive. That's your style, Professor. I mean, you gotta, you gotta think of it as a war. You were officially never invited to our game again. <laughs> I don't blame you. you. Put a guy like me in a game like that. My cards don't even matter. I'll play it blind. Michael, may I tell you a story? Please. For generations, uh, men of my family have been rabbis. In Israel, before that in Europe. It was to be my calling. I was quite a prodigy, uh, the pride of my yeshiva. The elders said I had a 40-year-old's understanding of the Midrash by the time I was 12. But by the time I was 13, I knew I could never be a rabbi. Why not? Because for all I understood of the Talmud, I never saw God there. You couldn't lie to yourself. I tried. Well, I tried like crazy. I mean, people were counting on me. Well, but yours is a, a respectable profession. Not to my family. My parents were destroyed, devastated by my decision. My father sent me away to New York to live with distant cousins. Well, eventually, I, I, I found my place, my life's work. What then? Well, I immersed myself fully. I studied the minutia. I learned everything I could about the law. I mean, I felt deeply inside that it was what I was born to do. And did your parents get over it? No. I always hoped that I would find some way to change their minds, but they were inconsolable. My father never spoke to me again. If you had to do it all over again, would you make the same choices? What choice? The last thing I took away from the yeshiva is this. We can't run from who we are. Our destiny chooses us. <laughs>